Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. Oh, God, it's been, it feels like ages since last I've done it. So this is our, our 17th episode of our podcast. And uh, my name is Somi. I'm glad to be here with my colleague and friend, JK. Um, welcome, JK. Tonight. Hi, everyone. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's also been a uh, while well for me as well. So it was, uh, it's awesome to come back. Hope, you, hope you're doing well. And you're joining from Brisbane. Ah, great. I just recently got my vision tooth um, um, <laughs> extracted. So if I have a little bit weird voice, apologies for that. But otherwise, awesome. You sound fine. Uh, I hope it, it went well. <laughs> and I hope it could recover ah. well too. Surprisingly well. Nice. I'm touching the wood for you. <laughs> All right, cool. Look, everyone, we've got a lovely guest tonight, Gio. I'm going to bring her up and I'm going to introduce her and then we'll get the ball rolling. Let me just bring up Gio. Hi, Gio. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Gio. Hi. Sorry, I feel like I lost Somi. Did you say something? No, oh, no. not yet. I was about to. <laughs> There's a little bit of internet issues. No, I, I guess we're good now. Thanks a lot for joining, Gio. I know you're joining from Perth, and um, thanks for joining at this time. Um, I know you're busy and everything, so we'll start the conversation, and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, Again, thanks a lot for your time, and also thanks uh, I, uh, for, for people who are following you. I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but I know you're doing a lot for our local communities. So uh, if you would like to start uh, introducing yourself and what you do, and then how did you land the role that you're in? Sure thing. Well, so me, first of all, so glad to be here. Um, it's not a lot of time that I'm going to get to spend, like, it's, it's not often that I get to spend the time with you and JK and also Arafat. I see he's at the back, right? I saw his name somewhere. Is he here? He is not. Sorry. Anyways, he's thank listening. you for thank you for inviting me onto your show, Somi and JK. Um, just a quick introduction. I am Gia, class solution architect at Microsoft, and my focus is on data and AI. Um, I think of myself as a champion for Microsoft data and AI technology. And did you ask me about my day to day? How is it look like? So um, in my day to day, I guide and advise my customer to turn their requirements into proof of concepts or minimal viable product and eventually until the production. Um, I also teach customers the technologies that we have, draw diagrams to simplify complex concepts so that it's easily digested for the customers. Um, I sometimes have healthy arguments with them as well to make sure that they have um, their data and AI designs, uh, what we call well architected. And I ask for help a lot from my colleagues, my peers, my mentors, my boss, because literally it's impossible to know everything, right? So you kind of on that constant learning journey every day. I also run hackathons um, using design thinking framework and build community and help empower students, young professionals early in careers to take the life in their own hands and envision themselves as the next great generation leaders in technology. Um, that is actually longer than I thought. Do you want to know my personal life as well? <laughs> actually quickly, just, just on this. I think, cause the thing is, I don't think there is such thing as professional life and, and personal life, right? So in my second life, um, I am an endurance athlete. I ride, I run, I swim, you know, like that feeling of overcoming the challenge that I thought it's not possible for me. It's so liberating when you actually achieve it. Um, it's remind me about being disciplined and I actually carry that forward in every aspect of life. Also like learning the new technology as well, because, you know, sometimes we think that we don't have the skills, but actually we have to work towards to acquire those skills. It's just that we don't have it yet. So anyways, another questions that you asked, how did I land this role? I asked myself the question. I am, I am the guest and I am the host. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I should have asked those in like a sequence, but it's interesting. Carry on. Yeah. Okay. So how did I land this um, 
cloud solution architect role. So I joined Microsoft about two and a half years, actually almost three years now as an aspired. I don't know if you have heard of an aspired. Have you heard of an aspired? No. No. Okay, that's great. So we call, yeah, so we call uh, Microsoft grads. Um, or like graduates or students, like fresh grads that just came straight out of school to join Microsoft as an aspire. And it's like a two year support program for these fresh graduates um, who would land their career at Microsoft. Uh, I was one of them almost three years ago now. And my, my grad role was in a non-technical, but more of relationship management, being resourceful, um, pulling different people to work together to get customer to wherever they want to go um, as a business using Microsoft technology. And you probably have heard of this role. They called me um, customer success account manager. And I was about a year into the role, um, the customer success account manager. And you know, like during that time was the pandemic and all the weird things that are happening out there in the world, right? And one of the greatest things that come with the pandemic was that it forced us to innovate and change in a way that we didn't expect. Um, and so did our Australian leadership team because they sat together and then they're like, all right, let's create this role that they call it um, Associate Class Solution Architect to enable more diversity into technical roles, bring new ways of thinking um, into the business and the customers. And they want to provide a more supportive pathway for junior people to learn and grow with mentoring or like job shadowing. And that was the job ads that I saw like internally. And I was like, oh, wow, this is so much. They were willing to invest into this cloud solution architect role for like junior people, right? Because, you know, like cloud solution architect, usually you get like 10 years of experience kind of people that come into the role. So anyways, they gave time for the successful candidate to ramp up and learn the technical skills. And because my focus was data and AI, so I've been, I, I am about like a year-ish into this um, cloud solution architect role. So I've been learning a lot of the fundamental concepts and the data platform and AI, basic AIs and um, data science as well. So anyway, so I thought, wow, such a good opportunity to change career path. I never tried, never done this before. I love to try. It was so scary, but I love to try. Anyways, I applied, prepared for the interview and I got in just just like that. <laughs> just like that. That 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 was awesome. Uh, I have lots of more questions regarding Thing, this that you mentioned you already answered my question I want to ask how did you get to know that Microsoft was providing these kind of opportunities and then you mentioned that you had you applied for it and so this is different from grad program or internship right so this is this is something that you have to apply in Microsoft career and then there are some criteria that you have to meet in order to be accepted right yes I, I'm right. asking the question because uh, that we will have listeners from different um um, age group and they're like a university graduate as well so it will be very interesting to see how you find this opportunity and how did you apply yeah absolutely so the the associate role is more of trying to get people that has different skill set to come into the technical roles so that they can bring diversity of thoughts it's not like just for young people or like graduates people it's just literally um you can be at any of your age you can come from any backgrounds, but then they were willing to invest um, the time in you to, to actually learn the technical skills. And actually I have um, one of my colleagues, she's actually in um, infrastructure or they call it Azure Core now. Um, and she has been a customer success account manager or technical account manager for 10 or 15 years. And then she got into this, um, associate role actually she was the first associate and then she kind of defined the program and trying to make it more inclusive for all the people that has different skill set to come into the role that's very interesting i wish i could apply <laughs> yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if there's one coming up <laughs> thank you and before we go back to the questions we kind of already said uh there's a few things that uh, caught my ear um, you mentioned something about teaching people and hackathons and uh, other events. Can you talk about a little bit more about that? 
as in what do I do in those events or who are those yeah, people? Uh, <clears throat> what uh, what type of events they are, um, uh, what uh, what they learn and things like that. It, that's uh, I think it's always uh, very interested, uh, interesting, especially if people don't know those hackathons are happening in Australia. Yeah, okay, cool. So my the effort that I put into building up the community was always or has always been with Michelle Sanford. So Michelle Sanford is our lead developer advocate at Microsoft. Um, and I think the reason why we kind of focus more on the student level, because that's where we see the lack of um, support. So when I say student level, it's it's um, from high school until like uni students and early in career who's trying to transit into um, the technology industry or people who are trying to um, reskill themselves. So we do um, a lot of teaching in that sense. Um, teachings meaning like a workshop. It could be like one day workshop or it could be um, mock exam sessions that if they are trying to sit the um, certification exam, actually I was gonna touch on that. Um, if we ever gonna talk about where do I start learning the AI um, fundamental on those things, but we do have like mock exam sessions. And recently I ran the um, hackathon for sustainability, but only for um, Western Australia. There are some online event as well that I did, but that was more of um, with the university um, on the East Coast, but for um, for the BUA um, Western Australia Sustainability Hackathon, um, we invite like the Microsoft trainers, not sorry, not trainers, trainees, Microsoft trainees and the students and Microsoft students um, accelerator members to come into the office to actually work with Microsoft people because we get given like learning day every month, right? So we organize that so that everybody can come and learn together on the sustainability topic using um, Microsoft technology to solve those problems. And it's like one day event. So I would say all the efforts that we 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 have done so far, it it's not ad hoc. We have like the overarching um, strategies of trying to get more diversity into um, diversity and I mean there's not just the gender right it's the diversity of thoughts and the diversity of age gets different types of people to come into um, technology career and see what is possible because um, and you probably have heard about this as well that if we cannot build like inclusive technology if we don't include everybody's in the room right so so that's what we've been trying to do yeah, that's great. So here we are also doing a lot of events and it's really good to see others doing events as well. Uh, and that's really nice. Uh, so let's go to the question that I actually have prepared for you. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to discuss kind of two aspects. One is the possibility of AI with Azure. And the other one is how a person who is either a professional or a new in the career can start their AI journey. Uh, so rather than start as someone who is not a data scientist or machine learning expert, how can I start my AI journey with Azure? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> The best place to start, right, for um, if you're not an expert in data science or machine learning is Microsoft Learn. Um, so the handle, not the handle, the link is aka.ms slash learn. And it's, um, it's a place where magic happens. Literally, you can go and learn anything about any topic in technology. Of course, it's Microsoft product, but we also provide the concepts of like, AI or data science or cloud computing so that you get the fundamental and actually apply the tools to um, to those fundamentals. And particularly for, let's say, AI, because it's a global AI podcast, right? So Microsoft have this um, fundamental certifications. If you are not an expert and if you don't know much about this area, the relevant ones are um, Azure Data Fundamentals and Azure AI Fundamentals. So these two are what will, will actually um, address like you know the basics of um, data science and Azure um, machine learning and also 
um, AI fundamentals, you can jump straight into the AI fundamental to learn all things basic AI. Um, but personally, I recommend starting from data fundamentals to understand the background of why we need AI in the first place, because we won't have AI without data, right? So do both anyways, um, it's fun, but just I'll prefer going um, to do the data fundamental first and then the AI fundamentals. In fact, when I apply for the um, Cloud Solution Architect role, I did both of these two fundamentals before the interview. Um, yeah, so I guess that probably helped as well. Actually, it's not that I guess, I know it helped because it's actually helped fulfill like the knowledge gap that I, I have with AI and, and data. And yeah. anyway, yeah, that's, that's, um, that, that'll be my recommendation for, for where to start. Yeah. And, uh, I think, um, if you want to learn all of that stuff, um, if I remember correctly, it's the virtual Azure fundamentals, uh, training that you can sign up for. You do the tra mm -hmm. uh, virtual training and then you get a uh, free, uh, exam, uh, tries. Exactly. And yeah. you also, I think these days there are also something called Cloud Skill Challenge as well. So if you sign up for that and if you go through the path that it say that you have to do, when you do that, you will get the free voucher as well. And that, yeah, that's for that's for the somebody that who just wants to start it, right? But I guess like this, like that my next my 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 next advice here of like the, the place to learn is also applicable for either who just started or or like um machine learning or data science expert or developer expert. Because once you pass the fundamental, you can choose a more focused um or specialized certification like you can go deeper in either field, like whether it's AI engineer associate or data scientist associate. So it's it's totally up to you. Yeah, I think I should. Um, I'm kind of a developer that first tried to learn the AI part, and now I'm just like maybe it's good to learn data as well. So I'll probably take your advice and uh, start looking into data as well. Absolutely. Actually, are you still a student? No. Uh, well, stu I think uh, everybody is a student, but yeah. but the students yes. in in <laughs> in um, the definitions of this Microsoft Student Accelerator, because there's also another program targeting at the student level. So if you have your kids or or, or your friend kids or whoever that want to you know learn more about AI and want a more structured way and community based learning, we have this Microsoft Student Accelerator um, where they can join and level up the skills. Um, and yeah, Michelle Sanford is the is the one behind this program. It's a year long program. Student can come and develop the business and technical skills that they need to land themselves in a career in tech or or AI, right? Like with ranges of workshops, case crack competitions, and they get mentorship from Microsoft people as well to unlock their industry readiness. So it's not just the technical skills that they get to learn, but also like the business skill. That's very interesting. To be honest, I started my journey with the, in AI with Microsoft Learn. So that was the very first place that I went and I started like going to the documentation and learning path. It was very good. And the, the amount of detail that is there is it was very simple. Even though I had like technical background, but it was very simple for everybody to understand and start their journey. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's interesting. You already answered the other question that if I'm not, a, I mean, like JK made a joke as well. So if I'm not a data scientist and a developer, what should I do? But you mentioned that like, it would be good to start with data fundamentals. So I guess that's good. Yeah, AI is all about data. And I guess mm -hmm. to start or maybe check in data side of it from time to time to understand how things work behind works behind the scene. That's yeah. very interesting. That um, and I, I love the, the Microsoft has lots of like resources and support that provides regardless of uh, where you are within the within your journey. It's good mm -hmm. to see that they are supporting students, developers, and beyond. Um, let's get into more technical and juicy stuff. Um, can you tell us about some of the few maybe apply AI services and maybe the practical use cases that you may have seen in the past or some of the use cases that you can share from Microsoft? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Um, 
I'll just kind of share two because there's so many, and I just pick from the one that I remember vividly. Um, the first one is Telstra, because we all in Australia, right? We all know Telstra. So, but just in case we have the audience um, listening in from different countries, so Telstra is the leading um, telecommunication provider in Australia, and I think like over the years. Telstra has trying to evolve from just being a traditional um, telecommunication to a technology company, and they wanted to take advantage of the emerging um, 5G network speed to create an application at the edge for its com commercial customers like um, Department of Agriculture um, in Australia. So or a Department of Transport, for example. And Telstra using um, what we call Azure Video Analyzer in combination with IoT technology like Azure Percept or Azure Stack Age. I saw um, your previous episode was talking about Azure Percept, so I'm not gonna go into details about what it is, but anyways, it's IoT technology and they're trying to use all of these um, technology in combination to decide if the video is worth sending over the network for deeper analysis or not. Because we don't want to send every footage, right? We only want to send the one that matters. Like say they are looking at the traffic um, footage, traffic flow condition, for example. If the video analyzer doesn't detect any car in the footage, they don't want to process that. They don't want to transmit that footage. So the apply AI services cut down the amount of data that is being processed and reduce the um, network transmission and the compute cost. So that is one of the um, use cases that I have seen and I remember for the apply AI services. Another example is the progressive. So Progressive is the um, major auto insurance um, provider in the United States. Um, so as an insurance provider, of course, they get a lot of questions about the quotes, about um, their claims and all those things, right? So they um, use Microsoft Azure Bot Service. So that's also part of the Apply AI services to build their chatbot. And I think their chatbot was so popular. Um, her name is Flo, like F. L F L O flow um, so that they can um, create the chatbot quick and fast because you know in the past like to create a chatbot probably takes like a year or or more to actually define like the structures and the framework of the chatbot but they were able to just spin that up quickly and then have um, some good framework and structure to build their chatbot within like three to six months. Um, I think it's currently available on Facebook Messenger, but you can check in and let me know if actually it's still available on Facebook Messenger. But um, anyways, the bot answer customer questions, provide quotes, and because Flo has such a um, quirky character, it's also offer a bit of the witty banter as well. And um, so that is the second um, use case that I've seen. That's Have interesting. You seen I'm gonna go and see. I'm gonna go and see if I can talk to Flo. Is it integrated with Facebook or? Yeah, I think it's well? um, integrated with Facebook Messenger. Yeah, I I can, yeah, I can see one that is now uh, renamed as Power Automate Bot. Not sure if that's the same thing. It's not Automate Bot. Ooh. Yeah, but that's. Ah, it's Flow app and Flow bot. So it seems like the Microsoft Flow is related to uh, Flow bot, which is what we, we're seeing in Teams is getting more and more uh, integrated. Mm. Yes, yeah, so we have Arafat saying uh, Flow bot equals Microsoft Power Automate bot. So you got a bit yeah, of confirmation because Power Automate used to be Flow, lots of renaming. That's right. I think at that time I was not born in cloud yet. <laughs> when when Microsoft Power Automate called Flow. <laughs> Sorry, JK. No worries. Not trying to um, <laughs> you know, point out your age or or anybody age here. <laughs> I think you were referring to Arafat. Not us. 
<laughs> He's not here. He can't defend himself. He is uh, in the background. I told you all. Arafat said, "Sorry." <laughs> no, no worries. We we all students at heart. Yes, of course. Yeah, I don't trust that. Um. So you mentioned uh, Azure uh, Percept, and uh, can you uh, talk to us a little bit more about the pro tooling uh, in Azure AI? And maybe uh, some uh, good examples for them. Absolutely. So with the pro tooling, to be honest, I feel like I might not be the good person to talk about the pro tooling, but the things that I remember if I see my customer using, my friends who are in this area using, and even when I learn AI, when I trying to develop or call the API, it always has to be VS Code, right? It's like the way to go. It's like that home for a developer that you can install literally any extension on this planet. Maybe I That's exaggerate true. here, but um, there's always extension for, for VS Code, like all of the Azure services. Um, and I don't know if I want to use the word pro because it's for it's all for all level of developers, AI engineer, data scientists, you know. And um, for yeah, example, maybe a better I, word would be like nicely packaged uh, AI services. Okay, so what I what I install on my VS Code for um, the AI to build AI solutions. I often um, use Azure Machine Learning for Visual Studio Code. I think in the past it's called um, Azure AI Tool or something, but they rename it to Azure Machine Learning. Um, so with that one, I can easily build and train and deploy the models um, to the cloud or at the edge, like with Percept. Um, I also install Jupyter Notebook um, in the VS Code too. I think that is like um, the tools that everybody um, rely upon, right? Jupyter Notebook, um, because you can use the Markdown text, um, execute Python source code on one canvas. That is called Notebook, of course. Well, just in case nobody understand what is Notebook. Um, but anyways, if um, it's for apply AI services, because I was talking about the Azure machine learning, right? So if it's for apply AI services, for example, let's say cognitive search, um, right? There's an extension for that. And um, when you install the Azure um, cognitive search in your VS code, you can create like components that are related to um, cognitive search, and you can take advantage of the intelligence to see if um, you make mistakes if you build off your um, JSON entities because that happened to me all the time. So I always make mistakes in my JSON entities. But that that would be like the tools that I use is I, I install as I go, like depending on what sort of, um, I guess, like service that I will be using at that time. Like, for example, I have not um, used one of the apply AI services before. Ah, oh, the metric advisor. I don't know if you heard, have heard of metric advisor. So metric advisor is part of the apply AI services. So that one is used to create like proactive monitoring and um, observation in your operating system, um, the operational system, sorry, not operating, operational system. I have not used that one before, but I'm sure there's also an extension for that. And I'll be um, installing that into my VS code if I ever come to um, use Metrics Advisor. Yeah, I need to catch up on the extension for Visual Studio. My, my favorite one definitely will, would be ML.NET, which is essentially offline machine learning with the option of doing it on the cloud. I see. Wait, so you are a .NET developer, right, JK? Yes. See, yeah. that's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. You're a .NET developer. I am a not .NET developer. Actually, I'm not a developer. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Uh, and that, that's great because our audience is from uh, various areas. Some are developers, uh, some are data, data scientists. Some might just be curious about uh, AI in general. And because a lot of topics that we do, they are not overly technical or at least not overly deep um it's 
the digestible enough for uh, for them to understand. So we're trying to target everyone uh, from that regard. Yeah. That's awesome. Following, uh, covering for general um, audiences, so the variety of audiences. I'm going to ask another question regarding, I, I saw this, but I don't know what exactly it is. So if you tell us a little bit about, tell us about the, the 100 weeks of Azure data and AI. Is this a program? Or is this some sort of a workshop? Can you tell us more about it? Sure. So when I came into this solution architect role, mm -hmm. I found that there's a lot of technical learning that is super challenging because of the amount of information that my brain needs to process like each week. Um, and I noticed that I learn best through writing and reflecting. So that's why I kind of started the weekly blog on LinkedIn um, and the hashtag is hashtag 100 weeks of Azure data and AI to share what I learned and built um, with with data and AI services to just reinforce what I learned. And recently I've been getting messages on LinkedIn from my connections that they've been following along and they learn new things too. Now, when I started, I didn't think about like the audience or trying to, uh, you know, like become like trying to get people to read my stuff, but it was just purely based on my own learning. And I was like, oh, it would be cool that I can share what I learn and see how other people would learn it too, or maybe like get feedback from um, people that have already been in the industry. So that was um, about it. Uh, but I, hang on, actually, I got inspired. Now I remember. So when I started, I got inspired by Daniela. So Daniela, my colleague that was the first associate cost solution architect. So she started the 100 week series. That's like two years period, mm. I think. But because she's not in data and AI, she's in um, infrastructure. And I was like, oh, that is so inspiring. Let me see if I can actually commit it to 100 weeks. It's wow. in a way, it's trying to hold yourself accountable to write like 100 weeks, right? But I have to admit that in the past couple of months, I kind of stopped. And simply because life happened and I went back home, holidays, COVID, woohoo, like the world's open up. So it's it's okay. Like now I learned that it's okay. And now I'll just go back and write about cost management in my next in my next hundred week series. Because you would not believe I got the bill saying um my Asher uh my Asher cost was fifty four million dollars. <laughs> I, wow. I know. I have the <laughs> screenshot. That was like during the time I was in Thailand, like for holiday. And then I saw like the um the alert saying that, oh, you have been charged $54 million. Um, dollars. And of course, like now I know is they have updated the system, but in a way I was like, oh my God, um, what if we don't have like a proper uh alerts or a proper structure in place to manage our cost, that could be a problem. You found your next topic. I found my next yeah. topic. Right. Wow, that is very so interesting. But anyway, yeah. so that's going to be my next, um, my next uh, 100 weeks of Azure data and AI. Um, what I actually like about like writing the blog as well is that you know, like people reach out to you and say like, oh yeah, I have never thought about this before. Thank you for like showing me this. Like, of course I started because I just want to learn better and understand the technicality better. But, you know, like people reaching out to me, I think that's a bonus. And you're encouraging other people to do the same. It's like a challenge. I mean, everybody can start doing that. Sign up to that yeah. challenge like share what you learn every week. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I might definitely. do the same. But maybe short, shorter period, not 100 weeks. <laughs> no, I can't commit long. <laughs> I should also start 100 weeks of something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a good dedication. Yeah, it's a good training exercise. 
Yeah, and uh, for the bill, that sounds like the early days of Cosmos DB when people forgot to uh, dis uh, shut down <laughs> the database or they were like, hey, I'll just create this a lot of something and then they don't know, uh, check the, the, the pricing of that something. Absolutely. Well, so hopefully uh, we'll educate everyone uh, to avoid those kind of bills. Yeah. Um, now I'll kind of go back. Uh, I seem to have uh, jumped the guns a little bit on the topic of uh, in-person or dedicated Microsoft trainings that will be available. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk if about more any... about them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, they are. Short answer: they they are um, in-person or dedicated Microsoft trainings available you can go and find the list of training partners on Microsoft Learn website. So whatever certification that you want to do, like the fundamentals or the associate level, you click on that one and then there will be a list of, um, they call it instructor-led training. So you will see you'll be able to filter by your city and the date and time. Um, keep in mind though that that's the one that you will have to pay out your pocket or you might get your organization mm -hmm. to sponsor you for, for the in-person training. Um, but if you're in Western Australia, um, as I said before, because sometimes we do like the mock sessions um, like Michelle and I do for fun, um, you can come along. We invite everybody um, who wants to be certified, come practice with us and they, they, they can do that before they sit the certification exam. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Awesome. I'm, I'm cautious about the time, so I'm going to ask the, maybe the last question. Um, there, are, when we talk about AIs or data or anything related to that side, if we, some of the question that comes to us is regarding to the job market. And if somebody wants to start planning out their careers, that's the very first question. Is if I start learning, I like AI, I want to do something about it. But what is the job market? Is, what do you think about this? If what what else, what is your recommendation? for the new starters? How high is the job market? In my opinion, AI is always hot in the last two, three years, and even until now. And I think it's going to get even hotter in the in the futures because as we are progressing into this digital economy, um, there is some ACS digital pulse report that's coming out and it's kind of outlined like the futures of where like we are going as a country like Australia. Um, I still think that AI, like the, the job market for AI will still be here. Um, although we have to solve those, you know, data platform fundamental issue first, because remember, there's no AI without data and there's no good AI without quality data. So yes. we are working towards it. But, you know, as time progress, of course, we'll get to that point where, you know, AI is literally so prevalent. Even today, it's prevalent, right? It's everywhere uh, ubiquitous. Um, everything, every services that we use has some sort of AI um, infused in it. So I think um, it's it, this is a good time to start learning AI. And, mm -hmm. and Azure is a good platform and simply because there's a lot of support, right? There's a lot of tech community. There's a lot of online materials. There's also free Azure account where you can create and deploy, manage applications. I think it's come with like $200 um, Azure credit, not 54 millions, but $200. <laughs> and they have like popular services that you can use and it's always free, although within limits, um, AI, uh, sorry, the apply AI services, cognitive services, machine learning is also part of the free services, you can spin up your account, but remember, delete all those idle or unused resources because you don't want to get charged like $54 million, right? <laughs> so Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just a side note, I have a lot of uh, idle services and I don't get even close to that number. So don't worry about too much. <laughs> don't worry about too. Depends on what you spin up. Yeah, yeah that's uh, true. Maybe check the pricing before spinning up. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, you, you shouldn't get like I have 200 bucks per uh, month and I do a lot of services and I generally, um, you know, most of them are free. Most of them are on request and I easily keep them within the 200 bucks uh, uh, budget. Yeah, 
but yeah, there, there are certain uh, services like Azure Machine Learning. If you put them too long, yeah, it can cost you. You are really good, JK. What's the report on thinking too much about this? You're so good. <laughs> well, we, uh, we're trying to cater also to people who might not have enough uh, finances to run a lot of stuff. So, Awesome. Um, I know we are a bit past our time. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Is there any final notes that you want to give our listeners? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I know I have, well, we talked a lot about a lot of things. Just one final note here because it's AI, right? I cannot just not talk about this. Um, educate yourself about societal implications of AI, please, and the responsible uh, responsibility of the creators and developers of AI solution. Because as I said, AI becomes more ubiquitous in the products and services that we use in our daily life, affecting so many different types of people um, across all sectors, right? We need to think deeply about how we are bringing it to life. Um, this should be the front of mind for all creators and developers, should not be treated as an afterthought process. Um, at Microsoft, we have uh, recognized six principles that we believe that should guide the AI development and use. So first one is fairness, um, second one is reliability, third one is safety. Um, Oh, sorry, fairness, reliability, and safety is the same thing. And privacy and security, inclusiveness, um, transparency, and accountability. You can check out more about responsible AI on um, Microsoft website. So please you, educate you, yourself you, about You finished on a great point. As you mentioned, we are like in the project that I've been so far, they started like adding and thinking about how they can add intelligence to their product. And the more we see these pro project coming out, I guess the more we need to be careful about how responsible it is. And we're touching on the um, dot house. Uh, so we, we are impacting a lot of lives. So we have to be very responsible around it. Thanks for, it was very great notes to finish our session. Um, is there any final notes from you, JK, that you want to share before we wrap up the session? Uh, no, I think uh, we covered pretty nicely and also we have taken a little bit more time than usual, but there's a lot of good topics to uh, talk about. And uh, on that note, uh, do you have a very, uh, thank, uh, thank you for coming to the, uh, the podcast. Uh, I wish you good luck with uh, all of the events. And with that, uh, yeah, thank you everyone for listening. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.